All right, folks. So as you guys know, the uh, Citadel was hit with a $1 million fine and information got released uh, publicly on the, uh, I believe it was the 9th. Uh, so you have people reporting on it uh, yesterday. I'm going into in depth. So I'm actually going to pull up the paperwork that was filed in terms of the uh, acceptance waiver, waiver and consent that's on the FINRA website. So why is this important? Because, well, we know, especially if you're a uh, AMC holder like I am uh, and you're a GME holder uh, like many of you are that may be watching this, uh, this actually extends way beyond just AMC and, and the GameStop saga. It This is a systemic market-wide thing that's happening, okay? The amount of manipulation that's happening, you're going to see explicitly how much of that is happening just through one market maker, right? We're not talking about Virtu as well, right? They haven't gotten fined or cited for anything. That doesn't mean that they haven't done things that were wrong. That just means that they haven't been cited, okay? Just like any criminal. There, like my fifth grade teacher said, you know, uh, you're not a criminal until you get caught, right? She was just, you know, being funny, but that's really how it is. So they got caught in some activity and uh, it's the typical um, typical story, right? So break this down. So obviously we're on Citadel's website. So as you can see, they rag about it. Unmatched scale, right? So right here, designated market maker on the New York Stock Exchange, which represent, we represent 65% of all New York Stock Exchange listings and have been selected by corporate issuers for more than 80% of the NYC NYSE IPOs, right? Now, we know, you can see right here, GameStop is on the New York Stock Exchange, right? AMC is on the New York Stock Exchange, right? So we're gonna go here, look at it. So you can look up this information on your own. I always like to show the sources so that people uh, can do their own due diligence and see for themselves, see with their own eyes. But I do this because I know some people may not have the time or desire. So this is something that you can listen to um, in your car while you're driving and you can get this information. So we're just going to go to FINRA site right here. Go straight there to look up, uh, look up FINRA disciplinary actions. Just going to go here. Just going to type in the name Citadel. And go ahead and agree, submit. All right, so right here, here's the case, here's the action. The 9th, 2024 of October. If you click here, this is what it pulls up, okay? So, I'm gonna read through this because there are some glaring issues if you actually read through these things and understand what's what what's the issue so first i want to start off and this is going to be uh not a full read through but almost a full read through because it's necessary um at least the first one two see so i got my note here one two three pages okay it's going to be almost like a full read through why because it's important you need to understand the information that we're going to go over real quick so pursuant to fenra rule 9216 responded Citadel Security submits this letter of acceptance waiver and consent for the purpose of proposing a settlement of the alleged rule violations described below. All right, so this is their acceptance waiver consent that they sent to FINRA. Okay, this million dollars they're saying, hey, we'll 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 pay you a million dollars. That's nothing. Okay, this acceptance waiver consent is submitted on the condition that if FINRA will not bring any future actions against respondent alleging violations based on the same factual findings described in this acceptance waiver consent. Okay. So as usual, respondents accept and consent to the following findings by FINRA without admitting or denying them. So even though they're paying a million dollars, they're basically saying that, yeah, well, we're not necessarily admitting it and we're not necessarily denying it at the same time. So what does that leave you with? That leaves you with bullshit. That's what we're looking at right here. Looking at the background. So here, just look at it right here. 
engages in market making and provides execution services in U.S. equities, options, government securities, foreign exchange products, right? Citadel Securities has been, Citadel Securities has a branch, offices of 800, uh, excuse me, offices with over 500 registered representatives, i.e. stock brokers and municipal brokers that are like, right? So look at this overview. From the start of its consolidated audit trail, reporting obligations on June 22nd, 2020, through August 28, 2024, Citadel Securities failed failed to timely and or accurately report data for tens of billions, tens of billions, folks, of equity and option order events to the CAT Central Repository in violation of FINRA Rules 6830, 6893, and 2010. Look at that, folks. Tens of billions and options. I tend to recall that there were some options that were on Ape when Ape went out and somehow options were out and they weren't supposed to be out. How would that happen on a New York listed stock exchange company? How would you have options for Ape? That doesn't even make sense. Those Ape shares were never supposed to have an option chain. So how were they getting sold in an option chain? They caught it like after like a day or two of them, you know, shuffling things around, but that's what happened. So I digress. So we're going to go to the next section here on page two. So the consolidated audit trail. So we all know that the consolidated audit trail, what that's supposed to do, that's supposed to basically make them report everything so that if there's some foolery going on, they're going to find out. Okay. Now, you know, obviously that Citadel was very against this vocally against this, having this consolidated audit trail right now cat reporting requirements so the sec adopted rule 613 under the securities and exchange act of 1934 to create a comprehensive audit trail that would allow regulators to more efficiently and accurately track all activities throughout the u.s markets and uh, markets and national market systems okay so nasdaq nyse you know, ARCA, all these, these are our national systems, right, uh, for securities. In November 2016, the SEC approved a CAT national market system plan in which uh, in March 2019, uh, excuse me, 2017, the SEC approved FINRA's proposal to adopt FINRA rule 6800 series for the CAT compliance rule to implement the CAT NMS plan, okay? Beginning on June 22nd, 2020, large industry members that originated uh, or received an order involving uh, national market systems or over-the-counter equity securities, right? So it's, it's not just happened with listed securities, you guys. This is for over-the-counter markets that they're having these consolidated, consolidated audit trails. So um, uh, count over-the-counter equity securities were required to report data to the CAT Central Repository and comply with Rule 6, 613 of Regulation NM, NMS and the FINRA Rule 6800 series. In July 2020, large industry industry members were required to report data for options orders to the CAT Central Repository as of December 2021. All FINRA members, which Citadel is, regardless of size, okay, doesn't matter if you big or small. They want everything. We're required to comply with these requirements. All proprietary trading activity, including market making activity, is subject to the CAT reporting. Now, why y'all think Citadel and Virtu and all these other people were against this? It's it's clear as day why they were against it now. But now they're starting to get caught. But they're starting to we're starting to see some regulatory capture. Okay. So regulatory capture, make sure, so as you can see, regulatory capture is a type of corruption that occurs when a regulatory agency prioritizes the interests of industries it regulates over the public. Now, as we read through this, you tell me, do you feel that this is an instance of regulatory capture? Okay. Now, FINRA uses the CAT data uses the CAT data to detect manipulative activity and other potential violations of federal securities law and FINRA rules. Inaccurate, incomplete, or untimely transaction 
and order reporting can negatively affect the regulatory audit trail and the quality of FINRA surveillance patterns. So what are they doing? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll show you what they're doing. They're, they're telling you what they're doing. They're, they're going to tell you that, look, we are not going to send these things over correctly, right? We're going to have errors in them, right? Well, if they have errors, that's doing what? Well, that's keeping FINRA from being able to actually audit things as per the audit trail. That's what the whole point of the, the mechanism is for, right? So as you're going to see, though, we read here, they're going to show that, look, well, we, we're, we're giving bad data so that you can't even track this stuff, right? But I digress. All right. Sorry for the tangent. As well as FINRA ability, as fin, as well as FINRA's ability to accurately reconstruct market events. So if we got bad data, that means that, that FINRA and the CAT system can't restructure. So if there's like a major collapse that happens like there was in 2008, basically, if they're getting erroneous data, they're not going to be able to decipher that or it's going to be very challenging. And we already know that the SEC is limited on resources, right? Because if you've seen that video uh i forget who is it? i think it's john silverman of the daily show or whatever his name is when he had it when he was interviewing garen gensler saying that like you know the, the 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 employees of the sec were saying that oh well we don't even have appropriate stuff to make coffee like we're short on supplies like they don't have the money what the, this is the sec folks the people that are regulating over everything for the capital markets in terms of stock and registered securities and sometimes in certain interests uh unregistered securities for qualified institutional buyers right which are you know basically entities that have 100 million or more in securities but i digress so let's get back i'm sorry i, I go off on tangents folks because i as you can tell i'm passionate about this stuff because it's a lot of bs and foolery that's going on and this is affecting everyone everyone even if you don't invest in the stock market it's 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 affecting you and me because the capital markets are what drive the economy it's the it's the oil it's the the lube to the engine the economic engine right then rule 6830a requires each member to record and electrically electronically report to the CAT central repository uh, specific details for each order and each reportable event as applicable. Reportable event is defined to include, but is not limited to, the original receipt, origination, modification, cancellation, routing, execution in whole or in part, and allocation of an order and receipt of a routed order. Uh, here we are. Okay. Routed order. So, FINRA rule. 6893a requires members to record and report data to the central repository as required by this rule series in a manner that ensures the timeliness accuracy integrity and completeness of such data okay a violation of FINRA rule 6830 and 6893 also is a violation of FINRA rule 2010 which requires members in the conducting of their the, in the conduct of their business to observe high standards of commercial honor and just and equitable principles of trade, right? So as you will see throughout this channel, I'm a reader. Hopefully you will become a reader too. This law, this book right here, The Law of Subrogation, talks about, uh, one of the portion is talking about equitable relief. Man, deep, you guys. I, I, I will get into that and I will tie it to the stock market, but it, this stuff is... It's deeper than you realize. Okay, it's deeper than you know. All right, so here we go. Continuing on, Citadel Securities failed to timely and or accurately report data to the CAT Central Repository System for tens of billions of order events. Tens of billions of order events. Now think about this, folks. If they're failing to do this for tens of billions of order events, are you track that transactions? What are the effect of those? Okay, what is the effect that's happening? Is there something illegal going on as a result of those actions that they erroneously reported? Did they purposely erroneously report them? That's the question, right? I'm not judge, jury, and executioner, but these are questions that you have to ask. Are these done intentionally? 
or is this just is this just a general you know mistake that's happening that that everyone's having this issue well if that was the case then you probably see more people having these lawsuits or excuse me having these uh acceptance waiver and consent deals but you don't see that happening in mass so that tells you that this may not necessarily be a one-off but citadel is doing something and it and they're not doing it correctly and they have the money to make sure they're doing it correctly i'm pretty sure of that as i'm sure you are as a large industry member citadel securities was required to begin reporting its order event data to the cat central repository on june 22nd 2020 to prepare to report to cat citadel securities developed a proprietary order and trading reporting system and uh system a testing process and related supervisory procedures designed to comply with the cats reporting obligation so they're saying that we created our own internal system to make sure that it can connect to your system okay so if you did that then that means that you've tested it you've done you've run trials on it it should be being done correctly right it's suspect folks it's very suspect in terms of what this looks like all right so let's get down to some of the nitty-gritty on this so from the start of its cat reporting obligation on june 22nd 2020 through july 30 uh july 31st 2022 citadel securities and actually reported certain data fields for approximately 42 billion 42.2 billion equity and option order events to cat spanning 33 unique cat reporting error types three types of errors accounted for 41 billion 41.8 billion inaccurately reported events with respect to those events uh to those issues uh, the firm did not report zero in the leaves quantity field for certain fully canceled orders impacting 31.2 billion canceled order events between June 22nd, 2020 and December 31st, 2020. Okay. That's a problem. Because why? That sounds like spoofing. If you don't know what spoofing is, look into the history of it. It was a guy, it was even a documentary. I can't remember who did it. I don't remember. I think it was a Bloomberg documentary on a guy who was spoofing the markets, doing what the big boys do, basically. And he figured out how to do this. And he made like, you know, like 30, 40 million dollars or whatever. Right. But this is spoofing. This looks like a smoking gun for spoofing, which when you're spoofing, you are making you're putting out an order. Let's say you're trying to make a wall. Right. So you're trying to keep uh, you're trying to suppress or you're trying to put a floor underneath a security. Well, what you do is you put a bunch of orders above or below whatever the, ex the, the execution price that you're looking to go because it will either support or it would be used as support line to discourage people from trying to short sell it through that line or it will be a resistance line preventing people or discouraging people from buying because they're gonna see all these sell orders that are gonna come in. So they're immediately gonna lose money. So what that does is that discourages people from taking action and placing orders, right? If you're looking at that, if you're looking at like level two quotes on the order book system. So this sounds like typical spoofing. That's what it does, right? Look at this stuff, man. It is, they're just putting it out here. Like they're just laughing at and putting this in front of our face. Applied the representative eligible indicator instead of the representative indicator to 6.3 billion new order events between June 22nd, 2020 and April 9, 2021. Did not populate the immediate or cancel, immediate or cancel time in force code for 4.3 billion immediate or cancel order events between June 2022, uh, 2020 and February 16th, 2022. Folks, that you can't make this shit up. I'm sorry, the, the, this stuff, this is a smoking gun. This is a smoking gun. No one's guilty. And they're always presumed innocent till guilty. But once you start to see stuff like this, folks, it's called building a case. And this looks like this is case building material. 
that the SEC would eventually possibly foreseeably don't know hypothetically, right? Don't nobody want to get sued as Keenan would say, right? <laughs> but this, this does not look good. Okay. From a, from a regulatory standpoint, that, that, that doesn't look good because you're essentially keeping orders from going through the correct way so that they can, you can be monitored. You're preventing yourself from being monitored by doing this. And then you're coming around on the back end and cleaning up as you can see, as we, as you will see, as we go through and read through the rest of this. So by September 22nd, 2022, Citadel Securities had remediated, corrected the 33 error types the firm experienced up to July 30th, 2022, some of which had persisted from a few weeks to nearly two years, two years. So they corrected two years worth of data in some instances. You can't make this stuff up. Citadel Securities reported the 580 million equity and options order events and submitted corrections for the 42.2 billion inaccurate orders events between one and 17 months after each reporting issue was corrected. Folks, <laughs> this is like this is like the, the the fox garden the hen house because if I make a mistake, a mistake, and I have the ability to correct it, but in the meantime, I can send you erroneous data so that you can't see what I'm actually doing, I'm probably not doing something that I want you to see. I'm just gonna go out on a limb, okay? Call me a conspiracy theorist. I, it just, when you read this, it just looks like a textbook cesspool that fraud can come out of. Clearly, this is just my goose guess, but I think many of you may make the same type of goose guess. I'm just going to be honest, right? As a former broker, I can attest that compliance, 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 compliance is up your ass consistently so for you to have these things go on for this amount of time for two years that that doesn't look right after remediating uh the 32 error type citadel securities identified four additional issues that caused the firm to fail to timely and or accurately report certain data fields for approximately 3.2 billion equity order events to cat from December 13, 2021 through June 30th, 2024. So this is as of very recent, all the way up to just a few months ago that this has been happening. The firm remediated these issues by June 30th, 2024 and submitted corrections for the approximately 3.2 billion events by August 28, 2024, right? Just a couple of weeks ago, okay? Citadel Securities reports, uh, Citadel Securities reporting violations were caused by various coding and system issues with data received from third parties. Oh, so it was third parties now that they're going to shovel that responsibility off to. They're still liable. That's why they're paying a the million dollars. But this is where they're trying to shovel off this responsibility. But ultimately, they're responsible. Okay. But they're saying this is a reason why maybe they were unable to provide correct data is because these third party vendors that they were using were giving them incorrect data. That that looks like a, a, a good out. That looks like a good alibi. Okay. I'm just saying. Uh, third parties and the firm's interpretation of certain reporting scenarios. Secu Citadel Securities identified many of the reporting errors through its supervi supervisory reviews. But those supervisory reviews took years to happen in some instances. You're a highly regulated entity responsible for a lot of securities, responsible for affecting a lot of pensions. The responsibility with great power comes great responsibility. All right. So here's the thing, though, folks. I'm going to go back up here. So look at this footnote up here, right here on four, right? Applied to representative eligible indicator instead of the representative indicator. So let's go down to the footnotes and read that down here. A representative order is an order originated by an industry member for the purpose of working one or more customer orders, orders marked by an inaccurate representative eligible 
indicator do not link to corresponding customer order. I'm going to read that again. Order marked by an inaccurate representative eligible indicator do not link to a corresponding customer order. So you're saying that there's a separation now? Like, oh, well, we can't link that customer order. We can't link that to a transaction with the customer who is actually putting in that order. Again, smoking gun for our spoofing tactic. Why? Oh, we don't know who, who did that order. You know, we get so many orders. We, we don't know who that was that put in that order that had to cancel that was pot potentially being used to spoof. I'm just telling you guys, it, it, it does not look good. All of this stuff, it just looks like, it just looks like pure fuckery. Now, I'm gonna say it. So we're gonna finish out with these other matters, okay? So this is uh this is pretty much the end of this video. I know it's a little long, but but sometimes you guys, I'm sorry, you you have to start reading this stuff. This stuff matters. It affects you. It affects me. It affects your grandma, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your kid. It affects us. I, I know it seems really big, wide, far from you, abstract, but you have to start learning this in little blocks, little pieces, just little nibbles here and there, accumulate information so you understand how it affects you. Because like I said in my other video, we're going to start having form letters to write to representatives. Okay. If you're familiar with Irvin, uh, Irvin Capital, or I don't know if it's Irvin Capital, but Irvin, they're, they're suing the SEC right now because they're basically saying, look, you guys are not enforcing the rules that you guys have. And the, when, when you do enforce them, you just give them a little pat on the wrist. That's nothing is going to be solved like that. It's going to take us, the individuals banding together, the beneficiaries, okay? The politicians of the trustees, we're the beneficiaries. When the trustee starts to get out of line and they stop doing what they're supposed to do, the beneficiary has to say, hey, you stepping out of line. This is what you need to do. I'm aware of you stepping out of line and you're not being, you're not, you're supposed to be the cop on the beat, but you're not being the cop on the beat because the Department of Justice, the SEC, all of these people, who do they answer to? They answer to Congress. Who, what is Congress? Congress are representatives of me and you. We have to make sure that they're representing us right and that they're calling people out when they're supposed to. All right, so right here, if accepted. This acceptance waiver consent will become part of the respondent's permanent disciplinary record and will be considered in any further action brought by FINRA or any other regulator against respondent. So they recognize that this is an action and that's why it's on the website right here. Whole list. You guys see that? Whole list. This is all Citadel, all of it. Acceptance waiver consent, acceptance waiver, con accepting, accept two pages, two pages. Look, acceptance waiver consent, acceptance waiver. So it's not as if these companies are just, oh, well, this is a one-off, you know, this is something that we don't normally do. You know, we're not, we're not a bad actor in this space. Yes, you are. Citadel, you are a bad actor because it's showing it on the disclosure from the regulatory body that regulates over you. You are a bad actor, but you're still allowed to operate in business. How? How? If I were, if this were a person, if this were a person, you would have maybe one, maybe just even one, but maybe two of these and then that person would no longer be able to operate in the business they will be banned okay do you understand that do you understand you guys td ameritrade or td bank they just got busted and they have like a fine like a three billion dollar fine or something like that that they're just that they're paying now td because of anti-money laundering because they've been laundering money that's been used for drugs and and human trafficking but they're still allowed to do business. Why? They should not be allowed to be doing business or they should be under such scrut strict scrutiny that it actually chokes their ability to do the business. Why? Because that's what you get 
when you do things illegal. Because as people, we would get barred. We wouldn't even be able to do the business anymore. We wouldn't have we wouldn't be able to have a controlling interest in a business that was in that line of business anymore. But yet these corporations can consistently pay a fine, keep doing what they're doing. Pay a fine, keep doing what they're doing. It has to stop, folks. It's only going to stop with me and you. We got to work together. Okay?